What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to be talking about something that almost no one else talks about related to the stock market that a lot of times can end up secretly destroying a lot of people's portfolios. So we're not going to waste any time. Let's get right into it. So it seems like in the market, some stocks seem like they just do nothing but skyrocket up while other stocks do nothing but just tank down. And while looking at a company's profits, revenues, um, earnings per share growth, and all that stuff is important, there's also other important things that you really have to look at, like a company's total shares outstanding. And this is very, very important. So really, watch to the end of the end of the video, it's important. So check out this example. Let's say we have company A that has a valuation of $1 million. And let's say there's 500 shares outstanding for that company. So if you do $1 million divided by 500,000 shares, that would give you a valuation of $2 per share. So if you wanted to own 1% of company A, you would have to own 5,000 shares because you would have to own 1% of the company's total shares outstanding. Now this is just a random example, but let's say the company is looking to raise capital, right? And they look to dilute their shares. Check this out. So if we zoom out a little bit and then we go over, let's say the company, like I said, wants to raise capital and now they want to issue new shares onto the market. This is a fairly common thing. A lot of companies do this in order to grow their business. When you issue new shares and dilute the current shareholders, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. It just depends on the situation. So check this out. Let's say company A, company A, like I said, says, you know what? We need money to grow. We're going to issue new shares on the market. Assuming they still have that $1 million valuation as a company, because remember, uh, share dilution and share like buybacks don't necessarily always increase or decrease the valuation right away. Um, so let's say the company still has the same valuation and they issue 200,000 shares. That would take the shares outstanding from 500,000 all the way to 700,000, therefore decreasing the per share price from $2 per share to $1.43 per share. So if you wanted to own 1% of the company now, you would have to own 7,000 shares rather than 5,000 shares of the company, which is the same amount like dollar-wise because it would still be around, or I guess, yeah, I guess you could say um, $10,000 uh, in, in real money, but it goes to show you that the share price actually decreases. So if we look at some of the famous share dilution type companies over the years, we have stocks like CGC, which is a um, cannabis stock, which over the years has had a very wild ride. It went from lows of a dollar per share back in 2015, all the way up to highs of around $60 per share back in 2018. And now it's all the way back down to like $6 per share. Over the past couple of years, especially, the stock has done nothing but basically fall in a very rapid way. We can see that CGC's shares outstanding have just exploded. So it, it, this is not a good thing. This is not a good thing at all. In 2016, their total shares outstanding were around 77 million. Now their total shares outstanding are around 372 million. So basically all of the people who bought CGC back in 2016 or 2017 or whatever, they own much less of the company now because the company diluted the heck out of them. On the other hand, if we look at an example like Apple that has been continuously buying back shares, not only have Apple shareholders benefited from increasing revenues, profits, dividends, and things like that, but Apple shareholders over the years have been continuously owning more and more of Apple as a company because Apple is buying back their own shares and basically destroying them, therefore, increasing the ownership percentage of all current Apple shareholders. So check out this example. So if we scroll down a little bit, let's say we take the same example basically with company A, but instead of uh, diluting, let's say the company actually buys back shares. So let's say, you know, let's say assuming the company still has a valuation of $1 million, um, and let's say they had 500,000 shares outstanding, but it goes down to 300,000 shares outstanding because the company buys back 200,000 shares. That would take the stock price from $2 up to $3.33. 
So now if you only now if you wanted to own 1% of the company, you only have to buy 3,000 shares rather than 5,000 shares. But the main point is to see how the share price changes in relation to how the company issues or buys back shares. So sometimes when you are reading company earnings reports or seeing news, you will see like on CNBC, for example, you know, Apple authorized $90 billion in share buybacks. This is relatively common for established companies like Apple. Sometimes you see companies buying back shares. Sometimes you see companies diluting shares or doing offerings. And I just want to emphasize that every offering or every share dilution is not necessarily a bad thing. It gets bad when you look at CGC and when they go from, you know, 77 million shares outstanding up to 371 or 372 million shares outstanding. When the dilution gets out of control, that's when it gets worrying. So for example, if we look at Amazon over the years, like their total shares outstanding went from 453 million, it looks like, all the way up to 510 million. And that's over the course of like 10 years. So while it is a decent increase, it's nothing excessive. And Amazon has proven that they can get a good return on their investments and they can justify that type of share dilution because ultimately what happens when companies dilute their shares, they just get the money and it's their job to invest it in a way that grows the company's you know, earnings and revenue and all that stuff. So at some point in the future, the company can end up profiting from the whole situation. But, you know, it, it's it's a situational thing. You know, like sometimes share dilution is good, sometimes it's bad, but almost always when a company is buying back shares, it's almost always a good thing. Um, like I said, Apple's a great example. It's always awesome to see companies buying back shares. Like even if we look at like HPQ as an example, Warren Buffett just took a pretty substantial position on HPQ. One of the reasons for this is because they've been buying back shares in a rapid way. And whenever you have a company that you own that's buying back shares, it's always great because you are owning more and more of that company every single day and you're not even really doing anything for that. So keep that in mind. Um, be on the lookout for uh, earnings reports when you see uh, share offerings and share buybacks to check a company's shares outstanding. There's a couple ways to do so. Uh, I would say the easiest way is finviz.com then you just type in the ticker symbol and you can just see their shares outstanding right here, right where my cursor is. Um, another option is the stock analysis dashboard that we have. Link in the description in the comments down below. Not only can you see the total shares outstanding standing, but you can also see historical data with it too in a very easy and customizable way. You could you know, adjust it on a quarterly basis as well. But um, like I said, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, sh uh, share dilution and buybacks are extremely important. Um, always consider them while you're making investing decisions because think about it like in the CGC example. If you just buy a company, like even if their earnings and revenue are increasing, if they're just diluting the heck out of you, you will still lose a ton of money. Like, like I said, the CGC example, like it's just, it can be a very dangerous thing. So monitor shares outstanding. It's very important. Uh, besides that, if you guys learned something, make sure to one, let me know in the comments down below, subscribe if you're new. Um, also, if you're looking to get basically everything you could possibly need related to investing into investing into stocks for the long term, definitely check out that first link in the description in the comments down below. You'll get access to our brand new stock analysis dashboard. You'll be able to see which companies are, dil are diluting, which companies are buying back, and everything else you could possibly need. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching.